How did I first find out about the ballroom community? I would say uh, about 1987 when I was just getting out of high school and just finding myself and um, on a couple of uh, trips, after a couple of trips to the West Village, hanging down at the piers and meeting different people. Um, you hear talk of the houses and you, gain, uh, you become curious as to uh, what it's all about. And, you know, speaking to people, I found out and then eventually the house scene was mainly New York kids with a sprinkle of New Jersey kids and me being from New Jersey the house scene started to travel over to New Jersey somewhat and um, I was invited to uh, eventually be become a part of a New York slash New Jersey house uh, by the House of Adonis and um, my ballroom career began from there. My first impressions of the ballroom scene um, were that of excitement and just newfound curiosity to all the, the, the glamour and the drama and the shade that was associated with the whole ballroom scene uh, back in the early 19, uh, early late, 90, late 80s rather, uh, when the balls were being held at the um, Elks Lodge in Harlem. What is the excitement for you? What inspires you when you go to the balls? Hmm, what inspires me when I go to the balls? I would say uh, just seeing all the different types of, of looks, the different types of people, the different uh, races and genders and age ranges uh, of people all coming together collectively on a creative note. Uh, all the time people spent behind the scenes getting ready for one big night. It's very inspiring to see people uh, so gung-ho about um, a particular category and pulling it off right. It's very inspiring. Uh, how influential do you think is the ballroom community? artistically, fashion runway, setting trends. Do you think we have an input, they have an input on setting trends? I would say that the ballroom community is, helps also, I mean we take a lot of the today's trends um, as game uh, individuals um, and transform them into the next set of trends. So we're actually, you know, a lot of the, the, the boys and girls who walk the balls are constantly looking at uh, fashion television, constantly looking at magazines, and we see those trends and we apply it to the ballroom scene, but we also add our own personal street flair to it. And so I think we're very influential in set, setting the next trend um, in the fashion world. I would say that the ballroom community is uh, still in an artistic ghetto, mainly because of where it branched out from. It's, it's sort of like how hip-hop first started. It was very underground. No one knew about it. Nobody was really into it except a small community of people until uh, someone actually took it um, under their wing and brought it to a new, whole new level. Um, and the whole ball scene may it may come to a significant uh, uprising as far as coming out of the artistic ghetto, but I don't think it would go officially totally mainstream because of all the all of it entails and all of that's behind it. Um, you know, especially with, with, as far as the gay issues, the transgender issues, as far as um, the different activities that somewhat go on at balls. Uh, and or how people acquire uh, some of the things that they get at balls, it doesn't necessarily make for a great news story. You know, so a lot of times negative news catches on a lot faster than positive news. So if, it's, if I feel that if it is going to be brought out artistic ghetto, it's going to have to be brought out, on a, I would rather see it brought out on a positive note. Do you think uh, voguing can be taught in schools? Do I think voguing can be taught in schools? Uh, I, I feel personally that um, it's, it's a form of dance, and if you include it under, under that title, then yes. Yes. Family. 
Well, f from a family perspective, uh, my family knows about me. They know about my work, and they know about my lifestyle as well. Uh, my parents are deceased, uh, but before that time, they, they were fully aware of myself. And uh, I hadn't started actually working as a drag performer then at that time, but they were aware of my sexual lifestyle. Um, as far as the ballroom com community is concerned, I, j I feel that even though we have lost a, a lot of role models, there always will be, there's always a, another generation of upcoming children, and there's always a generation of kids who have been there for a while to watch over those upcoming children, you know, and even though the information may not be readily available uh, to everyone, if, you know, the, if, if the individuals that are seeking the information uh, spoke up in a sense, then I'm sure, you know, a lot of us older kids wouldn't have a problem informing them and educating them as well. But there also can be like, um, and maybe that creates a need for like a support group or a forum just, just to help out those who are just coming out and a little confused and would like someone to talk to who's been there through the whole situation as well. Say something about the, you know the new school, the younger ones. Right. Better or the old school, which right. Okay. Something about the new school. I feel that the new school children can actually, um, they can learn a lot from the, from the old school children just by watching and just by by being there. With, sometimes you're a role model and you don't even know you're a role model as an old school person because you never know who's watching you you never know who's you know who's who's admiring you from a distance and that's why as old school children we should always be aware that you know we are still setting examples for them and that that example should be done in a positive light ballroom community empower themselves artistically through voguing, performance, runway, fashion, photography, painting, etc. Do you mm -hmm. have, do, do they have what it takes? Mm -hmm. I definitely feel that the ballroom community has what it takes to empower themselves artistically. There's so many creative uh, kids that walk balls and if they just took their talents and their exper expertise and creativity to another level uh, beyond the ballroom scene, you, you, you'd see so many more people, we'd have so many more positive role models um, out there for the newer and upcoming generations of ballroom kids. But there's so much creativity out there that if, you know, if each one of them that walked a particular category or did that something particularly special took a step further uh, with it, then you know, we'd have a whole new generation, a whole new slew of creative individuals out there for us. Why do you think the bottom community is uh, so artistic? What brings them together? I, I, uh, I feel that as gay and lesbians, um, we are particularly born artistically inclined. So, um, and the need of uh, the, the competition situation also brings about uh, a renewed sense of creativity as well. So it, you know, you, you already have it there, and then the whole competition uh, aspect of it brings about a whole new feeling of being creative and artistic. <laughs> I think that's his chair. That's what it is. What's your relationship with the House of Xavier? And when you walk that ball at the Pachita, do you remember walking and like the long blonde hair really like funny? Mm -hmm. What? Uh -huh. Is that a name for that kind of walk? <laughs> okay. Um, well, my relationship with the House of Xavier, I, I happen to be. Um, very close to Emmanuel Xavier, who was, um, I believe, one of the founding members of the house. And I was invited to come to the ball at Cheetah that they had, the, uh, the Esoteria Ball. Um, 
at Cheetah, and um, when I actually got there, they were on the category Femme Queen Vogue, and so the music started, and, and I felt rambunctious and schoolgirlish and giddy, and I just, you know, got up there and pumped to the beat, and the crowd went crazy. Um, Willie Ninja was there, so that was like, you know, um, th I felt very honored to um, be, um, be uh, let's see, uh, applauded by him as well as Kevin Aviance and a few other, you know, ballroom legends that were there that night as well. Okay, that was basically the ballroom questions. Now, my question is, you are a legendary walk, what you do here as mm -hmm. how, how did How did it come to that? Okay. With like the, the story behind it? The story behind me pumping, um, is one that I probably couldn't tell you much about. I don't, I don't know exactly how it even started. You know, I, I started hosting shows many years ago, and um, I believe that, you know, I, I, as, as a gay man, we all like to, uh, well, a lot of us like to um, consider ourselves to be models, in a sense. And, you know, as a gay man in a dress and a wig, you know, then you become a, a quote-unquote supermodel. And, with that whole attitude and a little bit of music, I guess the pumping began after that. And it actually grew to where everywhere I went, everyone just wanted me to pump. I mean, to most people who are new to it, they say, oh, she's just walking around. But to a lot of other people, it's, it's a whole new meaning and definition of being a diva. How, um, I question you a we're able to empower yourself artistically because you're making some, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's all you do for a living, these club things, but that is considered an artistic empowerment if you yeah. make a living. Mm -hmm. you do so therefore I consider you an, 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 a success when it comes to empowering yourself artistically. Mm -hmm. So I would like to go into that area, how, uh, how, how it empowered you, you were able to support yourself, mm -hmm. you know, how, how were you able to empower yourself? Okay. Well, actually, um, you never know what life has in store for you. And I was working a full time job and I was performing, f um, you know, just for fun from time to time. And then when I lost my full time job, I decided, well, you know, I'm going to give this, this drag thing uh, a try, you know, um, on a more full-time level and see what happens and it just happened to turn out very uh, successful for me um, economically and as well as um, <clears throat> as, um, as as a performer um, we all have the ability to do something that we want to do it just depends on how we go about it and when we go about it. You know, I, I would hate to go through life saying, oh, I should have tried this, I should have did this. So I'm, I'm one of those people who's always going to try something at least once to see if it's going to work for me. And this is one of those things that I said, you know what, I'm not working right now. I could use some money. I, I, I have this skill. I have this talent. Let me put it together. Together, I have some business sense and let me let it work for me. And it did. And I encourage everyone with, with a dream or a goal out there that to do something that they would like to do, to go for it. Do you have like an HIV AIDS message? You know, don't do drugs, you know, always use a condom, you know, something <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, I can give out a, a safe sex message, you know, um, AIDS is still out there and we're all still concerned about it to one extent or another, you know, and the bottom line is protection of yourself and of others. You know, we, we, we don't know everyone's status and everyone's not going to tell us their true status. So protect yourself, you know, treat everyone with universal precautions and, um, and just enjoy your life, but enjoy your life in a protected way.